Good morning, Mr. Higdon. Hey, hey, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Good, good. Um, so is this video or audio? Uh, yeah, I have, I have video if you have too, that would be awesome. All right, that's fine, hold on. Cool, awesome. So, um, All right. Cool, so this is already being recorded. Cool. Just so you know, um, and I'm just going to put up your, your website over here just sort of as a background. Okay. Um, for the intro. Okay, first thing, um, if you could just tell us a little bit about your educational background and your story. Yeah, uh, let's see. Um, educational background. I took five years to finish high school. Uh, I failed English my senior year, so I had to go back. Um, I didn't finish college. Um, I did go to a couple, you know, for a couple years there. But um, as far as my background, I'd worked my way up through work ethic and good communication, worked my way up corporate America to a pretty good salary. And I just realized that the harder that I worked there, the more they demanded and the less time freedom that I had. And so I went out and started my own real estate business, which did really well for a few years until the market changed and I ended up losing it all. I refound network marketing in 2009. Um, when I got started back then, I was in personal foreclosure. I was dead broke. I had been, you know, bill collectors chasing me. And I just decided to give it my all and became the number one income earner in that company. Um, you know, had 85% of the company underneath me and that was with no spillover or anything like that. And uh, since then, we've built a coaching and training business to, to help all network marketers in, in all different companies. And we now have clients in, all over the world. Um, and uh, we have a lot of fun. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's kind of the quick story. Yeah, that's a great story. Um, I was actually looking at your website and, and you know, it's amazing how, you know, someone like you um, can get to where you are in, in just a few years, you know. Um, mm -hmm. You know, a lot of us, when we're just starting out, we, we won't even think that we can get uh, so far in such a short time. But, you know, your story shows, uh, you know, you've, you've, won, you've won three BMWs. You have, you're one of the top earners in the network marketing company that you're in. You've made millions of dollars in commissions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you came from a place that wasn't so great at the same time. Sure. So I'm really glad to have you um, with us. And, um, and I really appreciate also your time that you have, uh, that you separated today. So... How did the idea to enter into network marketing, internet marketing, um, come into your mind? And what were the big problems that you faced when just starting out? So, so do you mean specifically network marketing or doing network marketing using the internet? Uh, yeah, the second part, doing on okay. the internet. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I had always wanted... I mean, it, it just made sense to me. And, and some people, they, they distinguish, you know, ne you know, network marketing online versus offline or whatever. Um, everyone you know is on Facebook. There's like no one, you can't name someone in your team that doesn't have a Facebook account. And if you can, that's pretty rare. And so there really is no more, in my opinion, online, offline. It's are you doing it properly and are you doing prospecting or marketing? And so I did, you know, both, um, you know, uh, of, I got started old school. I got started, you know, at a home meeting, a friend of mine invited me to a home meeting and I knew it was a network marketing company and I just had nothing else going on. So I went there and checked it out and got started at that home meeting. And since then I've done hundreds of home meetings, uh, but I've also done hundreds of webinars. I've done, you know, a lot of, you know, content where I've done marketing as well. Uh, the challenges I faced were um, that I've never been great with technology. So a lot of times I would spend way too long trying to figure out something that I should have just hired someone you know, to do or take care of. Um, so a lot of 
there's a lot of frustrating time and trying to figure out things that, uh, you know, that I spent too much time on. And, um, you know, so, you know, that's just something I dealt with. Right, right. Awesome. Yeah. So that's, that's really um, an interesting way because a lot of people, you know, they start network marketing with these home meetings and, um, and now, you know, it's purely on the internet. So like a lot of times you don't really have that personal touch anymore, so to speak. Um, and I know that's that's one of the things that you advocate for. You you're you very much like to have that personal touch. Like you had a webinar where you guys were um, really emphasizing the thank you card. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I'm. Um, you know, we we use a a service that's uh, not an MLM or or anything like that. It's just it. Um, is a way to send appreciation, and it's an online, um, you know, thank you slash greeting card dashboard. Where when we meet with people, I send. I mean, we, I don't know how many cards we send each week. It's a lot, but we send. Um, you know, we send little cards um, to to people, just thanking them for their time, and um, or you know whatever, just showing a little bit of gratitude, just to stand out because no one does that stuff. Right. And you know that's. We're constantly, I mean, we send out every Christmas, we send out to our different clients. We send out about, I think last Christmas, we sent out $9,000 worth of chocolate, <laughs> you know, high-end chocolate. And so we're, we're constantly doing those things just to, just to stand out. Right. Yeah, and that's really great, um, you know, to do something like that. And, and I, I read also that you said um, you had a really great product launch. Uh, you did about 850000 launching a product. Um, so you're in the product launch niche. Um, what market research do you recommend before launching any product or service and what are the precautions that we should keep in mind? Well, everyone, well, not everyone, but a lot of people, they have great ideas for products. And I always ask them, I'm like, well, who are you going to sell it to? And, you know, some of them will say, oh, I'm just going to do ads. That's a tough way, in my opinion, to if you're just basing your sales off of hopefully running successful ads, I think that's a pretty tough way to go. So my advice is before you create a product is build an audience. Get to know that audience, immerse yourself in that audience, know what they need, know what they struggle with, know what you can help them with before you even launch a product. So, I mean, we had, um, I think we had over 10,000 people on our email list before we created our first product. Um, you know, now we have 120,000 on our email list. And um, so when we create a product, we don't have to rely on successful ads. We know what our list needs. We know what our, the people that follow us, what they struggle with and where we can help them. And, you know, that's, that's the focus. So I think a lot of times people think that their great idea, you know, will, you know, people will just, you know, trample themselves to, to buy their product. And the truth is, um, you need to build an audience first. And so build an audience that trusts you, gets to know you. And that's why, in my opinion, all marketing, at least nowadays, starts with free content. That's why we do periscopes, podcasts, blog posts. We do all this free content to attract people to us. And some of them buy, you know, about, I think right now, about uh, 20% of our audience has purchased something from us. And, you know, that's, that's okay. You know, that's, that's what you need to, to understand, but building that audience is key. Yeah, that's a really good conversion rate. You know, 20% is really high. For some people really don't even have 1%. So that's an awesome, sure. an awesome number to have. Um, so um, I'm not sure if you have any experience with, with any partners, but I do remember reading about um, you had a partner in real estate, right? So in the internet marketing niche, um, it's all about finding the right people with the right mindset, you know, who, who have the same goals as you, who have the same passion as you do. So what are the basic criteria that we must keep in mind when trying to find a partner? Um, yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a, and it, and it depends on the definition of partner. You know, I have in just the last month alone, I've been given equity in four different companies to help them with their marketing. Now, I don't consider that a partner, although I guess it's it kind of is. So when someone says partner, I'm going to assume they mean like a 50-50 partner or something like that. It's easy, um, it's easy to justify bringing in a partner when you're not making much money. It's much harder 
to justify that when you're making a lot of money. Yeah. And so I see a lot of people, I, th I think it's a mistake, that they're not making any money, so they think, you know what, I'll partner with someone, and I'll partner with someone who has strengths that I don't, and we'll just split out whatever we do. Sounds great when you're not making a lot of money. Yeah. But if you have a big vision of making lots of money, um, then you need to understand that you can hire anybody for less than 50% of what you make. So I would just be very, very cautious with bringing in a 50-50 partner. I, I have, you know, hundreds of, of examples of stories that I've heard where it didn't work out and maybe one or two that it did. And so it's pretty rare for a partnership like that because typically one partner feels like they grow out, they outgrow the other partner and then they're like, crap, I'm in this 50 50 thing, you know? So there's a, there's, there's considerations there. I would tread very, very lightly into a 50 50 partnership. And if, and if you did, I would do it on a very project basis, not on a business basis or a, an entire company scope. Right, right. Awesome. Yeah. So doing like a joint venture more than anything is what you're kind of saying, right? Yeah. Joint venture would, could be a great test, mm -hmm. you know, or a, you know, something like a joint venture or a project on a limited basis. Hey, we're going to try this out for 60 days to see how it goes. Okay. And, you know, so those you, you really, you know, it's tough to go wrong with something like that, but just, just be careful. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, that's great advice, really. Um, so, I see that that you're really active um, in the network marketing niche. Uh, so, what is the biggest motivational force that you have that <clears throat> that drives you on a daily basis, and um, and how do how do you actually um, how do you actually have the time and resources to put up to put out such a wealth of content? Because I see that you put out a lot of content. I mean, it's it's really just. Um you know, experience. I mean, I, I spend less than, you know, prob probably around an hour a day um, creating content. So I don't spend a lot of time and I'm smart with how I create my content. Um, so, you know, I see con free content is the lifeblood of my business. That's how we've built our entire business. And we have, you know, a full blown ascension model that takes people from free product to, you know, $7 to, you know, whatever other products we have to a coaching application to all the way to our $54,000 mastermind. So we have it goes all the way from free to 50 grand a year. And um, so, you know, it's something that I look at it as I don't have time not to create free content because free content is what has built my business and built our entire, you know, empire. Um, I'm trying to think of your other question. What was the other parts of your question? Oh yeah, what is the what is the motivation? Oh, what's the motivation? Yeah, that drives. Uh, yeah, the motivation is impact. You know, in the beginning, it was money because I was dead broke. I was sick of being in foreclosure. Yeah. Um, it sucks. So in the beginning, it was to make money. I'm like, I'm gonna do this to make money, and then at some point, it kind of turned, and we realized that you know we can make plenty of money to have a great life. It's got to be about something bigger than that. And so now it's how many people can we impact? And I see network marketing as the most uh, concentrated, fervent audience for self-development that exists in, in the world of all niches. For example, you know, every single month in the United States, there's a network marketing convention that has over 10,000 people. Name anyone. Name any real estate, sales online marketing guru that gets 10,000 people to their event. There might be one, yeah. right? But, um, you know, next, or hell, next week, I'm speaking on stage with Tony Robbins, Robert Kiyosaki, Bob Proctor, and a whole bunch of other gurus at Eric Worre's event. Wow. There will be 10, 12,000 people there. That's just one event by one guy. And, you know, so network marketing is the most concentrated arena for uh, people interested in self-development. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Yeah, and and I read also that you shared the stage with Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, you yeah, know, a couple times. Now you're gonna go with with all these other guys. That's just really amazing. Yeah, um, so um, on to the subject of blogging, uh, because you know these interviews I'm doing it for my book, um, and the book is called Secrets to Blogging Success. Um, and the reason I I actually contacted you is because I saw a webinar that you did about blogging um, from Matt Lloyd. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm not sure if you're a mobile partner, but 
or you just kind of did that for Matt Lloyd um, as a favor, right, or something like that? Yeah, he, he asked me um, if I wanted to house some products with the marketplace. Um, so I, I am not involved with Mar with Mobe. Not that there's, I mean, I, know I have a lot of great friends that are. Um, we've we've kind of focused on our own products, um, but um, but yeah, Matt's a great guy, and and I know a lot of good people in Mob. Awesome, awesome, yeah. So, um, how do you approach um, how do you approach blogging, right? Because I see a lot of people get stuck with blogging. So, um, what are the suggestions that you have for someone who's just getting starting out? They they're trying to find what is the area that they should focus on in the industry. Well, you know, the, the two most common obstacles with blogging is number one, why would someone listen to me? And number two, what do I talk about? Um, and so, you know, the whole, and I, my, I, I saw my mom just walk in, so my dogs might go crazy. I don't know if you can hear them or not. Oh, okay. Um, That's a but um, the, um, you know, why would someone listen to me is actually very selfish in that you need to focus on your target audience and just, you know, educate and entertain them. You know, at least educate, right? And sometimes entertain if you can. Yeah. Um, so focus on what you can share with them. As far as what to talk about, the easiest thing that I can tell people, depending on their niche. You know, I've recently had some clients that weren't as uh, structurally educational as as we are, and they were more in the entertainment business, right? Well, entertainment is still value. You got to provide value. And if you're in the education arena, and that could be anything, that could be, I mean, a plumber could be in the education arena, educate people on plumbing issues, educate people on, yeah. you know, what to look out for before you hire a plumber. That's all educational, you know, so m a lot of niches, you can mix in education, and that's a really straightforward way to blog. And my biggest suggestion is what I call ILT, invest, learn, teach. So you invest your time, possibly money, to learn something, then you teach it. And most entrepreneurs that I meet, they're doing the I and the L. They're investing their time and money to learn things. They're just not sharing them. So they take all these notes and then they throw them in the corner in their office and never tell anyone about them. Well, not me. You know, I take whatever I learn and I create online content with that. And I give the source. It's not like, hey, I just came up with this. I say, hey, I was reading this great book and here's some tips from it. And I constantly ILT, ILT, ILT all the time based on courses that I buy, coaches that I hire, seminars that I attend, uh, webinars that I attend, uh, conversations that I have. I'm constantly ILT in. And so, you know, you just got to, you know, think about what kind of value can you bring to a specific audience and uh, look to out teach your competition. Yeah, that's that's really great advice, actually, um, because when you teach what you learn, you're actually reinforcing it for yourself, too. So you're learning that. Twice. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So it's like it's like the third time, really, when once it comes around, because you write it down and then you're yeah. actually talking it. So so it reinforces that whole thing. That's a good, yeah, that's a good strategy. ILT, right? Invest, yep. learn, and teach. Teach, yeah. Yeah, it's good. Awesome. So um, I really enjoyed the webinar you had, um, like I said. Um, so what are some tips that you have for someone who's, who's thinking of doing their very first webinar? Uh, first webinar. So I'll give you, I mean, I, I, I have an, a whole course on this. Um, some tips. Number one, um, only show one URL and only show it when it's toward the end and you want them to make a call to action. A lot of times I see people that they do a webinar and they have their homepage URL throughout the entire slide and that's very distracting. People will actually go to that instead of listening to you. You want them captivated and listening to you. Uh, number two, if you're going to sell something, which I suggest, um, tell them early on. Don't wait till the very end. So on slide three or four, I'm telling people, hey guys, I'm pulling tips from you know my course and I'll share with you how to dive deeper at the end. Okay, oh. So now there's no resistance because right. the number one mistake the sales speakers make on webinars or live is they teach, 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 teach and everyone's loving it. They're like, yeah, this is great. And then they're like, hey guys, I got something for sale. And because you didn't prepare them, they're like, oh, wait a minute. And they have resistance. And so if you're going to sell, tell them early on, hey, I'm going to give you tons of value. And at the end, I'm going to offer some of you a chance to dive deeper. That's all you got to say. Very, very simple. Um, when most people get into the sales portion, they see their audience plummet. 
the way to keep them on is say, uh, there's two things. Number one, did you get value so far? Okay. Don't say, did you get value? Because did you get value means, okay, I'm done teaching now, now on to sales. Okay. Don't say that. So say, did you get value so far? So that means that there's more value to come, but stick around. And then you say, uh, before we get to Q&A, that will keep more people on. And the truth is, the more people you have watching your, your sales presentation at the end, the more chances you have of, of making a sale. And so um, you know, have, have a big headline, some kind of big promise that you know, gets them to the actual webinar and makes them want to register. So those would be my quick tips for you. Yeah, those are good. Those are really good, actually. Um, you know, using those those words, you know, before we get to Q and A, it's all a, it's all about how you say things because that's that's basically all you have in a webinar. You that's have right. your slides and and you, your voice. <laughs> yep. That's good. That's good advice. Very good. Um, okay, so we're rounding here towards the end. So the online industry is sort of in a boom now, um, um, where like around five to six years ago, if you were to say, hey, I'm going to become an entrepreneur, people would look at you like, um, okay, this guy is like a slacker or something like that. But, you know, uh, now it's, it's very revered. Um, so how is this profession going to survive in the future? And what are your plans, um, let's say, five years from now? So, so do you mean um, the online marketing profession? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, just like the online industry in general, like... Um, doing marketing online yeah so online yeah. marketing yeah so i mean once someone has a taste of convenience they don't shrink back to inconvenience so there's not going to be a time where people say you know what i'm done buying on amazon i'm just over it i'm i'm done you know going to the internet for research i'm back to en encyclopedias right <laughs> No one does that. So we, we never go backwards when it comes to convenience. We go forwards. We want more convenience. And, um, you know, so the Internet's here to stay. There, there is no question. Most people consult the Internet uh, before they make any purchase. And, you know, they go and they look at reviews and, and things like that. And, and I'll tell you, there's, there's so much BS going on with the media, with the traditional media, that people trust bloggers way more. I mean, they just do. They trust people that are providing them value, that are getting on videos. They trust those people way more than traditional media and traditional advertising. So online marketing, content creation, blogging, that's definitely not going away. As far as our plans, you know, we're um, quarter one of next year, we're, we're going to be rebranding in, out of a personal brand and into a, a company brand. Um, so we'll probably bring it on. We've already brought on some, you know, a, a, a group of certified coaches that are handling some of our clients. And it's just going to be a, just a more company feel to it, but still with the personal, you know, touch and with the personal content that, that I personally create and my wife creates as well. So those are, those are some of the things, um, you know, we believe we can, you, you know, we can really, um, you know, build a pretty large company that impacts a lot of people. Um, and, we need it. You know, the, the network marketing profession, which is who we serve, um, that profession really, really needs it. There's no reason. I, I believe that there will be a day where, like it is in many other countries, like Asia, like all over Asia, network marketing is revered. It's seen as a, a very legitimate profession. Here in the U.S., it's, it has, you know, a lot of obstacles, a lot of things that, that you know, it needs, it needs to be improved. Uh, we believe there will be a time where when someone says, I'm a network marketer, the natural response is, oh, cool, man. I've heard a lot of great things about that. And I believe that day exists. Yeah, that's, a, that's an awesome vision to have. <clears throat> um, I remember hearing that um, in the webinar that you did the thank you card. Um, I, I, I remember you mentioned something like that, too. So that's, that's an awesome goal to have. Um, so the last question would be, um, what, what is the message that you want to leave uh, from our readers, from my viewers, and I'm also going to do an audio of this, so also for my listeners, what are the last words and tips that you would give them? Yeah, I mean, well, you know, I'll give you, I'll give you some of my, my common advice that I tell people that's, you know, obviously, I don't know who's going to hear this or see this, and I don't know, um, you know, where they're at in their life, but um, I'll just encourage you, uh, two very, very powerful words, uh, the word uh, until and the word despite. 
And so just know that if you are, if you have a big goal in your life, you need to work toward it until you reach it. And that doesn't mean work for 14 days. That doesn't mean work for the next 30 days or the next six months or even the next five years. If you have a big goal that means something to you and means a lot to you, then work until, work until you get there. And, you know, that's just something, you know, people ask me, they're like, well, how quickly could I get results with blogging? I'm like, you know, it took me about six months, but I would have, I would have taken two years because I knew that it would work eventually and I was just going to do it until. Too many people, they, they have a exit strategy before they have a commitment strategy. So work until. And the second one would be uh, succeed despite. Um, despite meaning you're going to have every reason why you shouldn't succeed. You're going to have every reason plus two on why you should quit. Succeed despite. Succeed despite your you know, educational issues. Dis- succeed despite the you know, acceptance or approval of your warm market or your friends and family. Succeed despite your lack of money. Succeed despite your demanding career or your 14 kids. Succeed despite, because I assure you, someone in your position or worse has already succeeded, and if they can, so can you. Yeah, those are great words um, to finish off with. And I just really appreciate your, your time today, and you and your family, um, they're also very blessed, and I know that you're going to have, uh, is it a girl, is it a boy, I'm not sure. But yeah, baby, baby girl coming, yeah. It's a baby girl, so she's also going to be very blessed, and you know, I, I really appreciate the time that you took out uh, for me, even though I'm, I'm basically a newbie as well. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. It's all good, man. You got to start somewhere. Yeah, exactly. RayHigdon.com. Um, and again, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. <laughs> you got it, my friend. Good luck, bro. All right. Thanks.